I'd say it's pretty safe to say that most of the world has heard about the little Dalai Lama incident. And if you haven't, you know, he's been recorded on video trying to tongue kiss a child, a minor, somebody young, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, people are now asking the question, should he be in that position of power? Is he enlightened? <clears throat> Why would he do that? All these questions, right? So I could care less about his little power, but I will touch on whether or not this is something an enlightened being would do. And I get it. You're not supposed to, you know, judge individuals. You're not supposed to be able to tell whether they're enlightened or not. So this isn't to be judgy, but just to clarify some things. Because um, I think a lot of people think just because he looks like a monk and he has that position of power that these individuals are all, you know, and fully enlightened. That they've all gone full circle in that way. And that's just not true at all. Right. And there is ways you can tell whether or not somebody has kind of went full circle, just moved to a different space. Um, the way they, with the way they speak, the way they, how often they blink, which that sounds corny, but just little things like that do tend to change or slow down. And um, which I'm not claiming this at all, but for sure. By no means is the Dalai Lama ever a fully enlightened being. Okay, he may have had recognition of how this was a whole, right? He might have had those that brief kiss of the divine, and um, he may know all the doctrines and every scripture. But by no means, you know, was this individual omnipresent, just fully present all the time, while in this recognition, this knowing, right? You could just tell by the way he carried himself, by the way he spoke, um, just his actions. And I would say most importantly, by his way to help guide and teach these other individuals around him, right? If you're really a master of the mind, right? If you've really gone full circle in that way. And, and to be honest, even if you've gone just halfway, like had a first couple recognitions of it, right? You could still teach and help people, you know, that haven't had the, I don't want to say below you, but people that just haven't got to that level yet in, in the meditation of it, right? So, him not really, like, just ever having any of his own wise words of wisdom <clears throat> outside of anything cliche like live, love, and laugh, you know. Is just a tall tale sign. Like um, whenever somebody isolates himself in another country and shaves their head and agrees to wear all the same clothes as everybody else, right? It kind of becomes an ego trap in that way, like the humble ego. You're just denying all these desires, all these worldly natural desires to attain something in the wrong way. And that's why you kind of stay there forever in the same outfit, shaving your head. Like, look at it like this. Why do most of the monks end up shaving their heads. Why does their their leader tell them to do that? It's because oftentimes hair is a sign of beauty, and they're afraid that if you grow your hair out, you're going to start identifying with that or just worrying about the beauty of things. But what is that? Now what are you afraid of? You know, What is it that's afraid of being afraid of being beautiful in that way? It's just not, not the way to go about desire desire isn't to be discarded it's it's diluted with ego and then it's just to be purified so that desire doesn't any any longer arise from a place of lack or fear so you know by no means is this to say that um he hadn't had some sort of recognitions or could help other people but it is to say that he isn't fully enlightened in that way he hasn't gone f full circle right or else i don't think he would necessarily still just be so in the act of shaving your head wearing the clothes and just um just playing a part in that way which to say to grow out your hair like you could also play it the other way and just grow out your hair and do all these things and try to appear that way but there you know you would also still be able to tell in that individual's being, if there's just something missing, 
There's something that isn't complete in that way. And for sure in his being, it, it hadn't gone full circle in that way. Just by the way he carried himself and these obvious actions that we see now. And I've researched this in the past and thought about making videos on it. But like I said, you can't really be judgy about who's enlightened and who's not. But, you know, he kind of gave me a reason to do this. So here we are. And um, again, this isn't to, you know, try to say what I think should happen to him. You know, I'm not trying to say cancel the Dalai Lama. But for sure he's not fully enlightened and I... I think we can agree on that now.